Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this scene we're going to take a look at using cloth to do some soft body dynamics inside 3ds Max 2012. So I have a scene here with a couple of boxes that are kind of wall objects and a ball that's going to be kind of a squishy object here. So we're going to apply a cloth modifier to it. Just select that cloth mod and go into object properties. And from here I want to select the ball in the left and I want to tell it that I want it to be cloth. The next thing I'm going to do is click on add objects and add all the wall objects that are in the scene that I want this to collide with and with them still selected I'll say that these should be collision objects and I'll just click on OK. So now if I go over in here and I say simulate this will simulate through and we'll see the object kinda crumbles into a pile of cloth which is not necessarily what we were looking for. So we'll click on cancel and say erase simulation. There's one important part that we want to check in the object properties and that's for the ball. We want to go down here and adjust its pressure. So this will actually introduce pressure inside of the cloth volume to try and keep its volume and that will give us kind of a squishy ball type of effect. So we'll try something like uh, 30 and we're going to check track volume and say OK and we'll simulate again. So this time when we simulate it is going to crumple up when it hits but then it's going to kind of bounce back off. We get a little of this jiggling going on and once it you know starts to roll forward we start to have it kind of bounce into place and just kind of be flat along the bottom where there's a lot of pressure from the weight of the fabric. So this gives us a quick and easy soft body. If I just kind of play this back, you can see it bounce into place and kind of roll around, which is pretty good. And this particular cloth solver is a really great cloth solver. You can use it for a lot of different things. It's, uh, it's very powerful and really effective, I think. And if we go back in here, you can change some of the properties of this. So if you wanted something that was uh, really a little bit thicker, you could change you know, the properties of the cloth to be flannel. And of course, if it is a thicker fabric, you probably have to adjust that pressure to be much higher. So maybe try something like 400. And click on OK. We'll erase the simulation and simulate again. So you see it, it kind of pushes out a little bit more. It has that thicker fabric. It has a little bit more of a pressure associated with it, uh, which is kind of cool. So you can really tune this and, and balance the two parameters out to get some different results out of um, out of your animation or your simulation. So I'm going to erase this again and we'll take a look at a, uh, another kind of interesting thing and that's if we go in and change it to something like rubber. So if I go in you'll see that the rubber has uh, quite a low val value of stretch so it's going to allow this if you give it some sort of pressure to stretch quite a bit. So if we go at 50 it's actually going to blow up kind of like a balloon. So I'll click on simulate and you can see it kind of blow up and then just kind of blob into place there. So this might be something you would on a pre-sim so that you know it reaches its equilibrium before uh, you actually start the animation and then it kind of comes in and blobs around as this kind of rubbery thing. Now the neat thing is you can animate stuff kind of falling and dropping on this and it will uh, react in the same way. So. Before there was any sort of pressure, I used to do things like this with cloth by filling it with little uh, beanbag type of uh, cloth balls too, which is another interesting way to kind of get this type of effect. But the uh, pressure value uh, really makes it a little bit easier in the newest version of cloth in 2012. So hopefully this will help you in your uh, animations and productions. Thank you very much.